All right, so we've finished the animation, but there's one last thing that I kind of forgot. So we'll just take care of that in this particular lesson. So the one thing I wanted to do with uh, the sweep animation or with the icing was that once it sort of forms, I wanted it to kind of settle down, you know, like, like it's melting a little bit. So it's like once you do the icing, I wanted to just shrink a little bit. So what, what you can do is I can actually have uh, two different animations happening and I can blend between them. Okay, so the idea is that I can take this and then I can take a transform and I can just scale it down a little bit. Okay, so I can just press uh, E and just squash it a little bit. Okay, so you know, this becomes you know, this, this becomes slightly, you know, squashed. But what we want to do is we want to blend it as the as the animation sort of happens. So I'm going to take this resample and we'll do a wrangle and give it some color and we'll blend based on that color. So let's turn on the curve view attribute. That's one of the nice things about having resample. Okay, so whenever you want to generate a ramp based on the length of a curve, just resample it and then turn on the curve view attribute. It's much more faster. Okay. So you don't need to type like a longer uh, function. Like you usually you end up uh, doing something like pt num divided by num pt. So that's much longer. If you do a resample, you can just type curve view and that sort of works. Okay, so I'll just do like at cd is equal to zero and then at cd dot r is equal to ch ramp and let's call it uh, blend comma at curve view and there you go so what we want is we wanted the other way around like this should be down and this should be up and then we'll take a we can take a warp and just blend them together. Okay, so we'll just take an attribute warp. There must be other ways of doing this, but right now, <laughs> but I kind of worked with this one. Okay, so I'll just take this here. So the default one comes into the first input and the, let's just call this squash. Yeah, so the squash comes into the second input and let's just jump in here. You want to import the position of the second one. So just take an import point attribute, take the second one and do a, take a mix. Okay. So if we take the original position and this one by default is kept to position. So if we take this guy and plug it into the position here, see, so you will be able to blend between them but we want to blend based on the color. So we can just take a vector to float to get the red color out and that blends in over there. So what we, so what you'll see is that as it goes up, you see it sort of settle down a little bit as the color forms in. But what we also want to do is we want to animate this a little bit. Okay. So we want to start here. And so as it comes up, I'll do, I'll just animate the value. Okay. And the position for both of these. Okay. So this also, and so what we want is that as it goes up, this happens a little later. Okay. Like it doesn't start off at the same time. So this sort of comes in. See, so it kind of goes down like that and bringing it up a little bit. So you'll see that as it forms, this thing sort of, yeah, it sort of starts to settle down. See, and at the same time, the final one also, we'll just need to increase the value. So just come in here uh, a little before do an alt click and come to this point and just increase the value. Yeah. So what you'll get is this thing sort of, you know, settles down like that. And if we plug this in, the sweep will look a little more interesting. See, so it sort of comes in 
and then it yeah I think we need to push this a little bit more yeah see so it sort of settles down maybe a little bit more yeah there you go see so it kind of just you know softens as it sort of forms now the other thing you also want to do is um, like what we did here which was extracting a particular frame so just check what frame you're ending the animation okay so our animation ends now at something like 350 so we'll just change this to 350 or let's do 355 it doesn't really matter what you want to do is uh, what happens is that even after the animation is complete it keeps trying to calculate you know everything so the whole thing remains very slow so what we can do is we can just do uh, the same time shift and do like a switch so at 350 it will switch to the static frame and it will go a lot faster then okay so if I just take a switch here okay between the original and the time shift and at 350 so you can see how slow it is so let's come to 350 I'll do alt click this is just manual you know so just come ahead one frame and just switch over so you'll see after 350 it immediately speeds up so before that it is fairly slow and what you can also do is like if you don't want see so it's fast here and then once it starts coming in it's a little slow and then once it is formed completely like our animation is done it will switch to the static one and then just you know go faster but now what we also need to do is we need to push this further because uh, we want the sprinkles to come in after 350 okay so let's just do one thing let's get this up to 450 frames and this I'll just bring this up to around 360 yeah so what will happen is like this will form and then you know the sprinkles will start to come in yeah so this stabilizes and then you get the sprinkles okay as a final thing what we can also do is uh, you know like this is this is the old stuff so I'm just still just keeping it here because I'm working in the old file but I can just disconnect all of this for now okay so what I can also do is uh, I can also do a boolean with the sprinkles so if you want like the sprinkles to sort of form holes in the in the icing we can actually do that so what we can do is uh, let's keep the convert VDB I'm going to remove the icing Okay, we'll get in the icing later, but what we'll do here, so the idea here is that we do the whole, you know, sweep animation, we convert it to VDB, okay, and then we use that for our sprinkles, and then once the sprinkles have formed, we reconvert the icing back to VDB, do the boolean holes in it, and then, then apply the noise to it. So it's sort of like a two-stage thing. So I'm going to again come back here and do uh, VDB from polygons. We'll plug in the switch at this point and make it 0 0.006. Yeah. And then, so yeah, this is not required right now. So let's just you know, get rid of that. And the same thing with this. We'll do like a control C, control V, convert this to VDB as well. Except what I'll do is I'll do a small peak over here to just make the sphere slightly bigger. Okay, so I'll just take this, make it 0 0.01 or let's try 0 0.1. Okay, is this, oh, sorry. Yeah, it's keep it to polygon and increase the number of sides. Okay, so let's do 0 0.01. No, too much. 0, 0, 0.02 okay that's fine and then we'll convert it to VDB okay and then we can do a VDB combine 
and do SDF difference. So you'll see, you'll get the holes. And then we do a small smooth, sorry, VDB smooth. Yeah, not that much, just a little bit. And then we apply the noise. So what will happen is you'll see the whole thing coming in. Yeah, so now the reason why the noise is not forming is because this is kept to uh, surface instead of density. So just make sure that you rename these guys to density. So yeah, so if you make that mistake, just remember. Yeah, and now if we come back to the noise, it will be there. See, there you go. And then if we do, and then we again convert it back. So we do convert VDB uh, to polygons. Yeah, there we go. So then you can just adjust like, you know, how much you want this. So we'll make it 0 0.003, which should be slightly better. Yeah, there we go. So the nice thing about this is that if when we merge these together, Let's also do a fill interior on this. Yeah, if you end up seeing some issues in the mesh, usually you need to turn on fill interior. Like see, I'm getting like these holes and patches here. Make sure you turn on fill interior, that will go away. Yeah. So now we can merge these together. Okay, so I can take this and then, uh, yeah, let's give it a color because that was causing a problem before. And we can merge these guys together. Yeah, this is all the old stuff. So I'll just move it to a side. Yeah, so if I come up here, so the interesting thing now should be that, see, we'll get like as they form, they'll generate like, you know, holes as they come in, see. So it looks a lot better, you know, mostly that. Yeah, like if I just see this, see, so you have like the icing or the sprinkles forming holes. So yeah, that takes care of everything then. So this is the uh, icing and the sprinkles and the cake. Okay. So in the next lesson, I will just give it some color. Okay, so we want some color on the cake and the color on the icing. So we can use that attribute color for final rendering. So once uh, the attribute color and everything is done, I'll do a small uh, video on, uh, you know, how I did the render setup, which isn't very complicated because it was just taking in the attribute color into a shader. And then we will move on to uh, baking the, you know, the high res geometry or the high res cake that we have made into uh, a low res, uh, you know, usable model. Okay. So yeah, the next lesson we'll do the attribute colors.